Hello and welcome to the Film Pittsburgh Fall Festival. I'm Caroline Collins. I am happy to be joined today by the creators of some of the shorts you just watched, and I'm gonna have them introduce themselves and them, their films to you. Sheer? Hello, my name is Sheer Barron. I'm the director and creator of the Train Teaching Link. Jen? Hi, I'm Jen Shaw. I'm the director and writer of Afro. Great, Ellie. Hi, I'm Ellie Wen, and I'm the director producer of The Misfits. Great, thanks you guys. I'm so happy you're all here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> this is such a fun block of films. And I have to say, it's like girl power for the, the women that we have here. The films that you created really are just girl power films. And I love them all. I want to just find out a little bit more about each of them. So let's start with Sheer again and tell us you know, where you where you came up with this idea. And more importantly, Sheer, for yours, yours was a student film, right? Yeah, uh, this was my thesis film, actually. I just graduated from Ringling College. Um, my film was based on an experience from when I backpacked in Asia, or specifically an experience from China, uh, where I, uh, I had like a 24 hour train ride and um, I was backpacking alone for a few months. And I was just used to always like finding the other travelers and getting along with everyone. Uh, but I got on this train and there were no other back backpackers. It was just me. <laughs> um, and everyone else was Chinese and they don't speak a good English. So uh, the minute I got on, I was like, oh, okay, I guess 24 hours of just, you know, me cooped up with myself. <laughs> um, the trains are like little booths with six six beds, three three bunk beds on each side. So there were another five people in my little booth. Um, and after a little while of me just like sitting in my bed, uh, like my neighbor uh, booth mates, <laughs> they just reached their hand out with some food and they didn't need any words. They just like share their food with me. And I was like, uh, and, and then they taught me how to play uh, card games and how to, uh, full heart-shaped origami out of uh, one yon bills, and and there was one lady that actually sat next to me for like an hour, just trying to figure out how old I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and after 24 hours, we said goodbye as friends. Wow! And it was kind of something that stuck with me for for years, yeah. um, where I kind of learned that there's so many ways to communicate, even when you can't speak. Um, I also volunteered with children with disabilities and uh, like communication was always a thing that I really cared for. So that's something I really wanted to bring through my film. Well, you really did. It it, um, it illustrated in two and a half minutes, which was also yeah. sort of shocking yeah. to me that you were able to tell that complete story in such a short time, but it really illustrated how we can communicate if we try. <laughs> I'm also Thank happy to, to hear that you did not, you know, were not attacked by a panda on that train. I <laughs> <laughs> thought that's where you might be going. <laughs> but it was no. such a sweet film. And did you illustrate as well, or did you have illustrators do it for you, animators? Well, um, my film is a 3D animated film. Um, I'm responsible for all the visual aspects. So I was, I did the, uh, the drawings that came before all the visual development, okay. as well as the like production itself. Um, I did hire a composer and sound designers that were amazing. And for a film without words, yeah. it was very important. Yeah. Um, and they did a really, really great job. Um, so yeah, that was the team. It was me and then the sound sound people. <laughs> oh, it was great. I, I loved it. Such a sweet little film that you came up with. Thank you. Thank I'm you so, so glad much. you shared it with us. And Jen, your film as well. I truly loved yours as well. It was, the, talk about girl power. You know, she yeah. really sort of, um, not only found her voice, but really found her, I don't know, energy and confidence. Tell us a little bit about Afro. Yeah, so Afro is really a film that I think addresses just like being of a certain culture and background and black culture and just having people kind of question or pigeonholing you into stereotypes that you personally don't relate to and, and just really kind of claiming and defining your own voice. So it's really about a young girl that's a teenager, she's dealing with bullying, and it comes from another black girl who said, you know, you do this, you're not black enough. And, or you do this, you, you don't seem like you're in touch with your culture and you have white friends and that, this and that. And I think, um, you know, in, in the film, it's really kind of juxtaposing these two women and really, you know, 
in it and by the end you realize that blackness is not you know one definition and that you know the other girl although she might be misguided in what she's saying we're all kind of brought you know in this kind of like white supremacist realm where we're taught that you have to be a certain way and they're both kind of caught up in that and by the end our lead character marissa i think really um is able to um confront her bully with celebration of black people um and in words of encouragement and then at the end you know as the title afro i think she comes into her own self and and then kind of completes that that journey so i think um you know i really just wanted to show a film for me that again like uh you know you take little elements from your real life and i grew up in kentucky in the suburbs and you know having certain interests and talking a certain way and maybe things that aren't stereotypical um you get accused sometimes of not being in touch with their culture but i was really always in touch and had parents that taught me to be very proud of where i come from and i think that this was kind of a way to show a film that was like all the things i wish i you know had the consciousness to say back then when i was being bullied or accused of not being black enough and really just wanting to relate to kids now that go through the same thing yeah really it it um was sort of a universal message of the, the high school experience and i think probably every you know teenager who sees it wishes that they could be that strong at the end and just to really sort of you know stake their claim um, I I didn't know any teenagers who could do that back when I was in school, and you know I have teenagers now. I don't think that they would feel that kind of confidence. So it was really fun to see that evolution of her. Yeah, and I think um, you know it's a comedy too. So there's like funny bits in it, and it really like goes to show that you know I I do remember standing up to people a lot, like you know right. saying little things back to them. Yeah. and quips and as i got more older and even dealt with it my whole life i was able to go no you're not going to define me i define me like and um marissa loving math um you yeah. know loving all those things that are rational but have to confront something that is irrational this whole you know it's a social construct that is very real and we need to acknowledge it and then work through it but i think when we talk about different cultures and race and backgrounds i think a lot of people can relate to this you know whether they come from black culture just being not able to be comfortable in their own skin because people make it uncomfortable not because you know they're afraid to be themselves yeah that's a really good point because you're sort of shaped by the forces around you mm -hmm. consciously and subconsciously that's really interesting i have to say at the end though i was dying to know how she did in the math competition <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like head how is it? <laughs> I know, like you say that. Well, like we actually are we were on IFP week with um Afro the Short. I, I have a pilot and we turned right. it into a series. So it is being pitched to networks and reps right. are taking it out. So maybe you will find out how I hope works. so. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to follow you now and just keep an eye on that so I can okay. find out. <laughs> so no spoiler alerts. Don't tell me what it is in your head. I'll have to wait and no. see. <laughs> Great. And Ellie, speaking of math loving young ladies, the same could be said for the misfits, every single one of those girls. Tell us about your film. Yes. Yeah, so I made the misfits as my thesis film in my MFA program at Stanford. And I had always wanted to make something, it's a, a documentary, and I wanted to find a story about women in STEM somewhere, but it's always been challenging to figure out how to do it in a visual way. So I thought hmm, maybe I should find a robotics team and find a girl that's on a robotics team and follow her. So I started researching, found some people to talk to. And what I found was that a lot of these girls were being pushed into more of the marketing PR roles mm -hmm. or social media or even like managing the team, but not really building and getting to work directly on the robot. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to research and Google, is there an all girls robotics team somewhere in the area? And that's how I found the Misfits. They are the only all girls um, team in San Francisco, wow. which is crazy to me because it's yeah. like the heart of Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to them. I observed them at this thing called Maker Fair, which is a really cool convention that celebrates engineering and building. And I saw them giving a demonstration to this group of young kids. And when I saw the passion and energy enthusiasm with which they were talking about building a robot and competing, I knew that there had to be a film. So I was able to follow them throughout their entire season. And I'm just really glad that I was able to 
follow them. <laughs> Oh, we are too. It was such fun to watch them, also to watch their evolution through the whole process of the competition and to, to see their lives outside of that also was really a special touch. You had some really good access to those young ladies. Thank you. Yeah, I felt really lucky that they all welcomed me in um, into the team and also into their families. So I was very grateful. Yeah. And you also sort of uh, showed the next generation with the first graders that they that they were. Yeah. The one little girl said asked a question about coding. I just I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> she seemed so tiny. Oof. I know. That's yeah, that's my favorite scene, I think. <laughs> Great. The the next generation of misfits, I think. Yes, exactly. Where are those girls now? When did you shoot that? Yeah, I shot that in 2019, um, spring. So the girls that I filmed, they range from freshmen to seniors. So some of them have graduated now and are in college and pursuing engineering or other interests. And now um, the freshmen are seniors. So they are, yeah, they're about to graduate, but they're still building the team and bringing in new people. So it's really great to see it continue. It really is. I'm so glad you brought their story to us. <clears throat> Excuse Thank me, you. I'm glad you all brought your stories to Pittsburgh Shorts. We are so grateful that you shared your stories with us and that we could share them with our audience. Um, I know everybody loved them as much as I did. So thank you. Thank you for your time, too. It was fun to just hear a little bit more about the background of it. So we're glad that you all could be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank, thank you for, you for enjoying the Film Pittsburgh Fall Festival. I hope you like the rest of it. Bye.